Welcome back to Open Studio. Okay, so I really don't like that. <laughs> that uh, that mistake, that, that kind of misalignment there. So I'm going to have to, I mean, it's okay, because what I'll end up doing is I'm going to re, I'm going to recoat this whole background, because now as the painting goes on, the very edges always kind of get mangled. So I'm going to have to kind of lightly respray the whole thing. It's not going to take much to get that even and, and missing, but um, for the rest of the painting, it's going to bug me. I can't fix that now because if I do all the respray on this, I'll just bang up the edges again and I'll have to redo it. So um, anyway, I'm just going to have to live with it. Such is the way things go. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to continue on with this handlebar, I think. Um, I'm going to try to get the piece in the back there. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. Um, and then what I'll end up doing is like this, the rest of this cable, um, the, the, uh, break is going to have to, is going to have to happen after I do everything in the background. So that's, that's okay. That's fine. Um, I'm not feeling that either. I feel like I'm going to forget to do that. So I'm going to take care of that right now. So I'm just going to grab a little bit of black and a little bit of the browns that are mixed here. This palette needs to be changed out again. <clears throat> More than likely, I will change that out not here on Open Studio because it'll get done at some point somewhere. So uh, I know I've done it on Open Studio, so you've seen it kind of happen. Uh, so I don't think I have to do that f for you again, I think. You get the idea of changing palettes and stuff or, you know, replacing the, the uh, parchment on here. It's almost time to reorder, um, and I've, um, I'm surprised at how long they last. I thought, you know, I'd be ordering that all the time, you know, those, the parchment, but, um, but they last a long time. Like, you only have to replace them when they fill up. Like, you would think that, you know, they get degraded, or like the, the black, for instance, the black area down here. I am working this thing all the time, mixing paint in it over and over and over again. I was positive I would just like rip it or wear through it and rip it, but you know what? I haven't at all. So again, props to Redgrass. Um, and I know when I when I posted the the original um, review of this, I I got a lot of you know artists saying, "Oh yeah, I've made my own wet palette for years," and and I understand that. And um, you know if if that's you know what you what you're doing that's great um i don't have the time to and the quality of this thing is so good it, it, i i couldn't imagine even remotely justifying wasting the time to make my own when this thing works so well and probably better than anything that i could make that it's just not the point you know it's just not you know it doesn't doesn't i don't need to do it so all right so the handlebars behind here are a little bit misaligned as well. See how this part right here is taller than the rest of it? So I'm going to have to fix that as well. So what I'll do is I'll start on the bottom. I'm missing the background on the bottom too as well. And this happens. I mean, it's just a, you know, things got misaligned. I didn't quite understand what I was looking at while I was cutting the background out, for instance. Um, and it's hard to figure everything out all at once. So it's okay. It's just a matter of knowing that there's some adjusting and, and moving around that needs to happen. So the light, there's, there's a light hitting the top of this um, handlebar here too, which is nice. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to do the same thing I did to kind of take the curse off that misalignment up there. I'm just going to grab and I probably, it's probably too dry. No, it's all right. Wow, holy crap. It's still all right. <laughs> all right, I'm going to take some of this gray that I used for the background repair up here it's a little too dark, but it's okay. It's going to work. And then I'll just kind of shave that down to where it should be. Again, I'm going to repaint this whole background. And when I say repaint, again, it's not a total like mask everything off and hit it hard with paint. Literally, I'm talking about breathing paint over this to kind of blend all these repairs together. That's my only goal for that. So I'm going to kind of blend this up into the background a little bit. It's going to be too dark and it's not going to match, but again, it takes the curse off the, um, the repair so that when I go to hit that really lightly with the, um, 
background color, it'll it'll all blend together. It'll be really seamless. Okay, so that's good. There's also a little drop of paint there too. But that puts everything where it needs to be, which makes me happy. All right. So I'm going to save myself a little bit of aggravation here, and I'm going to take some white and some of this brown to make a really light tan color. And I'm going to pop in the highlights along this, um, this handlebar on top here. Actually, probably come down a little bit more, the background. So that, by doing this, this lighter highlight right now, when I go to shade this in, it'll just take that, you know, take that piece out of it. I'm going to turn this now a little bit so I can get in a better angle. So I want to get this. What I want to do is I want to get this whole, um, oh, as I push the magnet up. Um, what I want to do is I want to get this whole line continuous now that I know what it is. So I'll grab more of these. This time I'll lighten this up a little bit. And I'm adding fresh paint to this, so where this paint was, this little drop of gray, which I used for the background, was kind of sketchy because it's been sitting there for a while. By adding fresh paint to it, it just helps reinvigorate it. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut in that edge along the whole handlebar here. And make sure that it is level across the whole thing. That looks good. The other thing I can do too is a little spot right here, this little triangle right here. That again is just, you know, I didn't know what it was when I painted, when I cut out the stencil for the background and I missed it. And that's okay. It happens a lot. So I'll just put that back in. What I'll do, um, and you'll see it when I get there, um, what I'll do, this background here too that I missed, since now I've really done a, you know, a lot of work to figure out what's what on this, when I go to do that background, I won't use the original cutout because, again, I missed things in the original cutout that I didn't, you know, didn't know what they were. So what, I'm, what I'll do, and I'll show you this when I do it, um, is I'll make a photocopy of the actual painting and that will give me all the little bits and pieces that I need so that it, and accurately so that I can um, match it up to this painting. All right, that's good. I got the background there. I got the background there. Maybe a little bit another coat there. And that feels really, really good. So since I got the background on the brush, I'm just going to look around to see if there's anything else that I missed. And I think I'm good. Yeah, I think we're good there. And I have that lighter gray here too that's that I just mixed up. So I can dry brush this over the other repair I just did where I said it was a little too dark. So instead I've got a match or a color that's a closer match to what it really is. Um, I can kind of go in and you know fix it. That looks good. All right, great. Now um, on to the... Um, the rest of the handlebar. I think, is this done? No, this isn't even close up here. Maybe I should finish this first. Yeah, maybe we should do that. All right, yeah, so this is, this is darker than I have it. Um, it's darker than I have it on both sides, which is interesting that I didn't finish it before I moved on. But again, you know, working on this for half an hour and then stopping, and then sometimes I don't get back to it for another week. Sometimes I'll film two or three of them in a row and that's nice because then I'm, I'm in the groove and I'm you know I really kind of uh, I know where I left off but sometimes I do I just stop and then and then I, I'll come back to it you know a week later and I'm like what the hell did I do <laughs> uh, so anyway what you just witnessed there was exactly that I'm like did I did I intentionally stop working on that or did I just leave off on that and never picked up on it again so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to find that cutout. And fortunately, it is recent. Oh, and I'm going to give you a perfect example of that. So 
the very last thing I did was I was working on the headlamp. I wasn't working on the um, the bars. And I, now I remember that because I left myself a love note. It says, paint me next. <laughs> so on the last episode, I'd cut this out and that was where we were supposed to pick up. But I didn't open this folder till now, so I didn't see it. But that's okay because this crossbar is not done anyway. So we're going to jump around. And yes, you can sing if you want. Jump around. Jump, jump, jump. Jump around. All right, I'll stop. <laughs> Let's grab the um, cutting mat. I'm going to put the cutting mat over here. Oh, just off to the side. Um, you know, actually, I don't even need it because this is already cut out the way I want it. I just want to make sure that this is really clean. Like there's some... It looks like I cut this out twice and there's, there's a little bit of extra paper on that. So I want to really make sure this is nice and clean because this edge is important and it looks like it's just darker. You know, I, just, I don't think I just, I don't think I made it dark enough, which works out well in a way because I did all that texturing where the paint and the rust is, the red and the, that yellow ochre there. So, um, so this will help blend it all in. Let's see what I got in the airbrush. Uh, it almost is going to work. This is just a really dark, actually this isn't dark enough, never mind. I was going to try to use it. Um, I was actually using this brownish color on another painting. It's, it's like a real dark, dark umber color. So it's umber with a lot of black in it, but it's also, I don't know, you can't really tell. But, um, but it's not as dark as it needs to be. It would just basically do what's already on there, so. So I don't want that. There we go. So get that out of there. Um, my paper towels go. I have to grab another one. Okay. There we go. And I'm going to grab the, um, black mix that is one to five. So this is the color that I use for a lot of just um, kind of getting things dark. I, I, it does pull a decent line with these smaller brushes, um, but it's what I use it for specifically is to really like make things dark. Get this in a little closer here. Let's see where I'm at. I try to move this down, but the magnet might not let me. There we go. Okay, good. And yeah, it moved the paint copy, but that's okay too. And it's fine. And I'm going to say it again because I do it all the time. I should place another order for uh, these heavy duty, like bigger neodymium magnets from. Um, I use um, amazingmagnets.com, which I will put a link to their site. Um, because, yeah, see, I only have three of them, the, those big, big ones, and I always lose them. I mean, I don't lose them. They just end up somewhere else. So these are the other two. I do have others of these, but, um, but I'm using, using them for other things, too, because they are. They're great. I, I just can't get over how strong they are. All right, so this is straight black. Well, you know, one to five. So this, I'm just hitting that lower edge. I really want that dark because it's a lot darker than I have it here. And it's got the gray background to stand on. And I know why I didn't finish this, because right now this looks right. When you look at it in comparison to the photocopy, I probably did this and then thought it was dark enough and pulled it off and didn't even look at it. You know, really didn't take it into, you know, take it into account with the rest of the painting. So I, I, now that I've saw that, I can really, really get in here and darken that up. That should be good now. I can use that black too. Yeah, that's much better. So what happens is the, um, the reason why it's so hard to see when I was doing this is because the photocopy, the background here is it's like this well-lit bike show or car show. Uh, so that contrast really is strong in the original photo. But with mine, since I've made it the background very dark, that contrast doesn't really stand up as well. So I have to push that a little bit more to get that to work. And I really want that. Um, I should know <laughs> what I was going to do is I was going to put this here and then lightly go over that and make that look better. But I'm not, I'm going to avoid doing that because uh, it just makes it, if it doesn't work, it's a harder fix later. 
All right. So for this handlebar, the overall color that's neat, there is a the rust color down here, but then up here the handlebars are wrapped with some sort of fabric tape that looks like it was black at one time. So the top part here is gray, the bottom part has got that, that brown to it. So I'm going to start with the brown. I don't think I have this cut out anywhere, so I'm going to have to cut this out now, which I will move this over here so you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm going to do both cutouts even though they're both different colors because they're far enough away from each other that it's not going to matter. And I am going to use the same reminder, paint me next template, uh, because again, these cutouts here on the headlight are far enough away from the handlebar that it's not going to matter. In fact, I think this is brown anyway. Yeah, it is. This is the, the darker brown color. So, I'm going to do... Cut out the... You see what I'm doing? Yeah. I have to constantly look at the monitor to make sure that I'm on camera. It's this really neat mount here. And again, a lot of these finer cables and uh, things um, I'm going to leave off until after I get the tank done. Because I could take all the time in the world to paint these fine cables in, and then when I do the tank, I'll either have to mask it off, or I'll get paint all over it anyway and I'll have to redo it. So try to um, minimize my doing things twice, if you know what I mean. So this... Um, how do I want to do this? This clip here, the, the clip for the cable, the brake cable, um, that's roughly the same brown that, that the rest of the pipe is. Yeah, you know what, I will cut it out. So there are two ways to do this. I could treat the, the, the um, pipe for the handlebar separate from this clip, and then you know cut out this and this side of it and leave the clip and do that separate. Um, but they are so, so close um, in value and in texture that I'm just going to include it. So what I'm going to do with the first one is I'm just going to cut up to the, the gray wrapping, that black wrapping, or whatever it is. This bike has so much going on with it, with texture and, oh, it's just, just cool. And deceivingly, you know, complex because, you know, people look at this and they just see a rusty bike, a rusty beat up bike and the brain registers it very much like you register a word, like you're not spelling out the word in your head. I mean, on a difficult word you are, but on a, on a simple word you see every day, you don't it, separate all the individual letters, sound them out, and then put them back together. You recognize the word as a, as a word, as a unit, because you've seen it, and you're familiar with the overall shape of that word. So the same thing happens with something like this. You're familiar with rust, and you, you know what an old vehicle looks like. So your, your brain blends all this together, and you just it gives you the image. So what's fun when you get into doing something like this as a painter, you're, you have to look at everything, understand it all. You do have to spell out every letter, and then you have to put that back down on paper. You know, it's like, yeah, it's, just, it's, it's the best part about being an artist. It's a lot of fun telling the stories. All right, now, now, if I'm gonna paint this brown and I'm gonna have it in the brush, does it make sense to start tackling something else? Yeah, why not? Um, no, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip it. The other image, that the other value and, and texture that's just like the handlebars are the frame of this bike down here. But I'm not going to get into that yet. I could start cutting out the frame parts and just kind of block in brown, but it's, it's not going to make a difference. The reason why it's not going to make a difference is because I pre-mixed the base brown anyway. So it's not like I mix up the color for the handlebars and I'm like, wow, this took me a while to mix this color. Now I got to use it in as many places as possible so I don't have to remix it again. I've already mixed a bunch of this knowing that I was going to use this color a lot. So that's part of the reason why I just said no. All right. Now the, the wrapped part over here is gray, has a gray base. So I'm going to leave that for now. Um, I may even use another photocopy because it's right next to the, uh, the brown part. Oh, look at that. I missed all that, too. 
Nice. That little part right there that I painted background gray, that's actually part of the part of the um, handlebar. It flares down. So there you go. Obviously that's a super easy fix. Really easy fix. Now, is this brown gonna help me up there? Probably not. Just line this up first and then figure it out after. That looks good. Um, what I'm looking at is like this color here is a real dark, dark brown. I could hit it with this brown. It'll act as a decent base, but it's kind of not gonna make a difference. What I might do is, I, since it is a dark brown in the headlamp, in the headlight, um, I'll do this brown here, then I'll darken the, the brown with black, and then I'll, I'll put in the rest of the headlight. So I can do both of these at the same time. So I'm not technically letting my past self down where I said do this first. Um, clear this out, because I have black in there. I'm going to use that paste brown mix. It's been sitting around for a while. There we go. If you haven't checked out the Tech Tuesday on these mixing bottles, do that. Um, these things have revolutionized what I do. Um, I don't often need to uh, mix up colors. Y you know, I usually mix on the fly, but when I do, these bottles are amazing. Um, so check it out. It's in Tech Tuesday. It's under the mixing bottle. Um, and, the, you know, I, I talk about how I get glass beads and put them in there and everything. They just, it works out so well. All right. So a little bit of brown. This cap is jammed up with paint, though. Really? Really, really. All right, well, whatever. We'll make it work. Just need a drop of this stuff because this, again, this brown is 100%, um, meaning when I mix this up, I didn't put any reducer in it. So. So I just need one drop because it's full strength and it'll go a long way. I'll just uh, add some reducer to it now. Mix that up. See how light it is too. It just, it's, I'm glad I did this. I'm so glad I did this. This isn't a difficult color to mix, this light, you know, like chocolatey, it's actually lighter than chocolate, but it's chocolatey type brown, like milk chocolate, like um, hot cocoa color. Um, it's not a difficult color to mix, but if I had to keep mixing it over and over again throughout this whole painting, it just would be a drag. So, And I talk about that one in the beginning when I'm using it. Um, on a painting that will have that you know color throughout a bigger painting, I'll, I will sometimes do that. I'll just mix up that one color in a bottle. The last jet painting I had this one here, it's called Bellotti, uh, it should be B-A, I don't know, I, I have three L's there, I don't know why, but this is the sky color for that jet, um, that jet painting I just did, so, because I knew that I would need it again, so I mixed it up. And then, you know what's nice about doing that? Um, if you mix, if I mix it up 100%, meaning I don't put reducer in it, this bottle here, which is just a light sky blue, which is nice, I'll use this somewhere else. This will last as long as the regular, you know, the regular bottle. It's when you add the reducer to it and, you know, the other stuff, that's when it kind of gets the clock ticking on it. Um, don't get me wrong, they do last when you, when you put all kinds of stuff in them, but they don't last as long as if you're just mixing paint 100%. Same thing with this one, obviously the brown is 100%. All right, so what I gotta do is I gotta start by covering up that mistake where I thought that was background. So I'll start with that, and I'm just, again, I'm going to be real patient with this. Move this magnet down a little bit. I'm just going to be real patient and let this build up slowly. Because again, this paint is reduced, so it's a little bit more transparent now. So I want to just avoid the, the, uh, the, the, the want to just hammer this thing, you know, to just put this paint on like a spray can. And trust me, no matter how long you, you've done this, it's just the need to get it done sometimes overrides the need to do it right, which is painful. Now 
uh, and it's got oh, it's just got all kinds of nice things going on. There's a great highlight along the top of this because it's right out on the open. All right, before I get too far with this though, what I want to do is I want to drop. You can't see it there down here. These I'm going to put two magnets down the bottom so I can move this magnet and just take a look at it, see how it's going. I love it. 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 Okay. I feel like I want to put the texture in now. You can really make out this cool as I move it anyway. Well, well, well. All right. You can make out the texture. Now that's really, really smooth right now, and I don't want that. So I'm going to grab, um, what am I going to do here? Let's grab some of that brown again, that uh, brown that's on the palette up here. That's way too light. Uh, yeah, there we go. So I want kind of a, a medium rusty grayish color. So I'm going to dry that out. I'm going to get the, the brush, going to get a lot of the paint off that brush. So that way I can put some texture in here that's roughly the same color. It's a little bit darker. And this is what I'm doing right now. I can't get you any closer but hopefully you can see it. So the, what I'm doing right now is, is exceptionally difficult with the airbrush. This really super fine, tight texture. It's just too hard to do. Um, I guess you could come up with something similar by, by just doing it freehand with the airbrush, but I'm telling you it's gonna, and you'll see what happens when I blend this in with the airbrush. It just has a different look. It's, it's softer, you know, no matter how amazing the airbrush is and how tight you can get with it which is pretty damn tight um, it's still not as sharp edged as the paintbrush so doing stuff like this just makes sense so I'm just avoiding the clip because the clip seems to be smoother it doesn't seem to be as pitted so I'm throwing this texture in all over I don't have to worry too much about you know oh I put too much in because you'll see why in a second when I go to spray over this thing with that same brown the brown's going to cover a lot of it anyway so i just want to get that feeling of that rough metal i can also start to um, define that the clip that holds the brake line on this is going to be really really dark here but it's nice to be able to just start to you know start to work things in Again, as I put paint on this, I lose the HD stencil, which is what I want to do. I want to bury it. But um, when you lose the HD stencil, now you don't have the reference marks as you did before. So it's nice to draw them in as you go. There we go. Feel good about that. All right, great. Obviously, the handlebars take a lot of wear and tear abuse from both oxidation weathering and just being beat up as the bike is going all over the place. All right, so back to that same brown. Now with that brown, I just kind of go over this thing again. And you can see it just kind of mutes that just a little bit. Put that, start to get that shadow in on that clip. And again, on the back side here, it just kind of just really gently pushes that texture back, you know, makes it so it's not so in your face. Uh, there's some nice gray in there too. So what I'm going to do, yeah, there's some really neat gray that kind of comes around on this, on this handlebar too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop, reset the brush. I'm going to paint the base gray in for this tape wrapping here because the tape wrapping goes all the way to the, the grip, which you can't see, it's off the page uh, or off the panel. And then when I get the gray in here for the base, I'll use the gray over here. And then I'll shade it all with black and get the whole thing done. So this will be a good, a good mix. Um, but <laughs> because it always happens, you know, I end up getting wound up and, you know, just lose track of time. We are just about at the end here for this episode. So, um, 
Great. So what we'll do is um, I will we'll pick it up right where we left off. I will not forget for the next episode where I where we left off because I want to get this done, and uh, and then that you know that other you know kind of work up on the headlight. So maybe that's what we'll do on the next episode. All right. If you liked it, please click that um, like button. Um, if you haven't subscribed yet, I would love to have you on board. That would be great. And um, if you click all notifications too, you'll you'll get updated on um, when I drop videos. It's a pretty regular schedule around here. We go you know Tuesday, Wednesday, and then live feed on Thursday every week. Uh, but occasionally, um, I'll I'll drop a time lapse or some other you know video on the side that that wasn't scheduled. So that uh, clicking that notification button will uh, will get you all those. All right. Thanks so much for hanging out. I'm Steve Leahy. This is Open Studio, and I will catch you all on the next one.